Hello and welcome to another day on the shop. Today, working on the boat. To see what's going on right after the intro. Uh. So today, what's going on is I'm going to be putting what's called a leisure battery in, uh, in the boat. So we have our main battery and then we have a leisure battery. Uh, what that's going to entail is making sure that I have the ability to, that's not wiping off, that doesn't wipe off. So let me get some Windex. I'll show you a little bit if I find my Windex. We'll use 409. That's just as good, isn't it? So, all right, spray this a little bit, spritz, spritz, spritz. Look at that, comes off this time. Let's erase most of this. All right, there we go. Okay, so we'll take this little marker right here. So you have your main battery, main battery. Boop, boop. It runs the engine, which I'm not gonna really draw an engine, I guess. Engine. And then this power and ground to that. Uh, it also goes and charges from the alternator on here, sends power to that. This also is used for any other accessories as of the trim or anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a second battery in, which is going to run the radio and 12 volt outlets outlet and anything else accessories that we want it to run but this is a standalone battery so it doesn't interfere with this I have a charger which will send a charge from this battery through here to this battery and it only sends it one way and if this battery drops down a certain uh, voltage this battery can supplement and jump this battery. So this little box is important to have so that it charges both batteries at the same time but if this one gets low it'll jump this one and we don't have to worry about that battery. So that is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to hook that up. Uh, I also have a solar panel uh, that I want to put in to be charging up the battery as well when it's sitting in the sun or anything else. I also have a uh, voltage monitor. You have your main and your aux, so I'm going to be watching both batteries on that. Uh, here is my little smart battery isolator. So in case of anything, this will be the one charging. Uh, I have my little uh, distribution blocks, which is going to go battery to here, here to the radio. So if I need any other accessories I have, these two here. I also needed some new shocks, so I put some, I got some new shocks and new brackets just in case. So we got a radio and speakers as well, and then we got to make the backing for the radio. So it looks pretty. So the boat still tore apart from the last video that I did with the boat, which was fixing the uh, issue of it running, which was a oil safety cutoff switch, which is fixed. It works. So now we're going to get into all this and put a battery in, put the isolator in, uh, and then put a radio in. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be possibly putting the battery on this side because the other side has my other battery on it. And it looks like I might have the ability to screw into the back of that fiberglass right there to put that isolator. Uh, just enough room for that and a fuse. So got my battery box the battery box should fit nicely let's move all this oh. safety first safety 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 I can probably put my battery right here so it's out of the way it doesn't mess with the fuel and it's accessible if I need it to be so and I don't want it in the way of over here because in fact if I have to work on the motor I can pull these things out 
So I'll probably put uh, my fuse from my battery to there or back there and then it'll shoot forward. So all my wires will just kind of, I don't know, we're, we're, we're figuring it out. So if y'all can see, I don't even know if y'all can see. All right, so battery goes there. Isolator goes over there so I can watch it in case I need to. And then all of the power goes forward. So that's what's gonna happen. We'll just get everything in place and start working our way down the list. All right, well, I got this out. So it looks like what I'm gonna be doing is, this is all going to the second battery, these two. This one's gonna be a switch, uh, which I'll probably just put a switch in here somehow, some way. That's just back in this general area uh, so that if I need to make the batteries jump each other, that I can uh, by manual switch just to jump the uh, boat off and then I can turn the switch back off but it looks like I'm gonna be putting this right about here or so so I can keep an eye on it so uh, and it's hard mounted in and then the wires will just go each way and I won't have to worry about anything else with this so with the battery tray right there all about uh, all the wires will just wrap around here and be behind there so you won't ever have to deal with seeing them and then the other wires will wrap up and possibly be connected up here going to the front so well if you can see going they'll be up here wrapped going to the front so i shouldn't have any issues with that so uh i'm going to pick the place i want for this box and then uh start getting my wires uh, cut and ran and uh, getting them together and then these two wires will eventually just go over to that battery uh, which I might just do it further over so it's even more out of the way but you can still see it down here so that looks like it'll work over there so uh, yeah let's get these wires started all right so a little update uh, instead of going from the battery, which is way over there, to a power source, because my box, if you can see that black little box right there, it comes around and it goes to the alternator where the charging port is anyway. So this charging wire right here has this 4 gauge wire coming off of it, which goes to uh, my little isolation box. Isolation charger right here. This is all hooked up. I'm going to have this yellow wire to a switch right here probably so that anytime I need to jump uh, the batteries just click that switch and the power wire should go between each other and charge. Here's a ground. It's grounded to the block so I don't have to go all the way to the other battery as well which the other battery is grounded to the block so it makes it easy. Shorter wires. Everything is getting done to a professional manner heat shrink and everything else. I'll show you how I do all this in just a minute. Uh, this is my grounding cable. So this section to the other one is hooked up. Now I've got to run a wire from here to the battery and have that done, which I'll probably just put a connector on here that is uh, uh, detachable in case that ever goes bad and I just need to um, have that done or not. I might just run another full wire to it, which wouldn't be long, so probably like that. But anyway, like I said, this mounts right here, and it should secure it very well, and everything should be in place. And then, up here, is a battery, where it's going to be. And then my inline fuse, right here, is going to be put somewhere. I don't know where. It might just be put on top of the battery box itself or on the back side of the top so that if I ever need to get to it or even in with the battery box. I don't know. We'll find out. So, I'm gonna take a little snack break, wipe some sweat off, and then we'll get back to it. All right, I don't have a whole lot of light here, but battery's in the battery box, but Bat top is on here. I'm contemplating on leaving this right around here, which is a inline fuse and the wire just wrap around come out through here and then just go up and over because uh, it's just out of the way it's connected to this and I won't have any issues with that 
the other power wire will go up to the charger. So it looks like uh, that's what I'm going to be doing because of uh, just tidiness. So and ease of use. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so it's a new day. Uh, it's hot. I'm already sweaty and dirty. Bought a switch. We're going to see how this works. It's supposed to be a light up switch. That's why I bought it. And it looks like it's waterproof. It's got the little rubber thing right here. But we're going to try this out. So I thought about wanting to put it up here somewhere. I'm going to depth find it. It's going to go there. I thought about putting it there. Uh, but. I thought, why run a wire, figure out how to cut something up there, when the whole object of this is this switch just controls the leisure battery to the starting battery. I know I need to clean up all that wiring mess. Uh, but if that's dead and that's not, I hit this switch, sends all the power from there to there or technically from there to there and that should start up so I thought why not put it right next to where the little charging box is right there I'm gonna put it right above it so I took a container because I didn't have any other plastic or aluminum it's pretty sturdy so I cut it it's gonna be drilled into between uh, that box back there uh, and the wall behind it and the switch is going to be sitting right above the wall so I have access to the wires so I'm hoping this will work I'm hoping this thing will light up so we're going to try this out and once I get this done then we will have the box wired up almost completely uh, the battery's right there I still have to run a wire from the battery up to here to have a junction box or something like that uh, and then I'm gonna have the switch which is stereo right here control a relay which is going to control all the CD player and the 12 volt system and everything so I'm not I don't have a chance of draining this battery for no reason with the boat not being on and somebody leaves the radio on or whatever else I can actually turn it on and off and it has a light that shows me if it's on or off so, let's get started. Alright, so I just cut this out good enough. This thing fits in here quite well. Once it's screwed on, it won't bend much. I don't care if it bends, as long as it doesn't break. Because the only pressure I'm ever going to have on it is when I just push it. And if I ever need to, I can reinforce it with something like aluminum or whatever else. But, this should work. I'm going to clean up these edges a little bit here to make it flatter and uh, then I'm going to unscrew the box and once I unscrew the box I will screw this in the top two bolts and it should hold pretty good and create some force behind it to where it won't bend much. So let's get to it. All right, now that you see that I did that, I took this little switch out so I could actually uh, work around it. Uh, I left this little side up, it doesn't really matter. I probably could have done a better job back here because I left this edge open. It'll secure it a little bit better once it gets back there. But that side's pretty okay. Like I said, if I need to, I've got a piece of aluminum uh, angle that I'll put right back here and it'll hold it up a little bit better. But now, as you see, I've got to do the other positive to this other battery right here and once I wire that in which I think I already have it made I'll put it in secure it secure this one and then run these two wires right here that uh, one's like I said the switch and one's a ground so the switch goes to the switch which will be able to be pushed either way and should hopefully light up so we're gonna see how this all works alright so I got the power wire right here so we're going to undo this well we won't hook that up yet 
I gotta go get the other thing for this. But I gotta measure out this as well. So we're gonna roughly measure out this to over here. So I can cut this and then get this in order the way I need to. So we'll measure it up starting from there. Oop, starting from there. Droops down. And it's got a long enough cord. So we'll say it's about that long. So get my handy dandy pliers out. Snip. Alright. Did that part. And this one right here will be good to go for the switch. So I can solder these all together, or not solder them, but I can at least butt connector them or whatever. So that's what you're going to see next. All right. Well, I'm going to show you all some professional wiring. All right. So this is going to the ground switch. So I'm going to rip that off. Make sure this is twisted good. All right. I'm going to put this piece of heat shrink on here. I'm going to put this stating it's a ground, which because it's black. I'm going to put this piece on here, and then we're going to crimp this on here, however we got to, which we might just double it up to make sure that it has a really good squeeze on it. There we go. It's real tight in there. So, I'm going to take our pliers flip them over. There's the creases back here, so we're going to line this up. Crease once. Fold it over. Crease again. Real tight. Alright, there's that. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll already, I'll take heat shrink and heat shrink right here. But right now we're going to put this over it so it stays. We're going to take this heat shrink right here Come all the way up it, making sure it's got a good connection on it, like so. Oop, let's back it up a little bit. There we go. So it doesn't slide forward at all, and it's on there. So when it goes on the switch, it'll stay exactly right there because it'll be heat shrinked. All right. I like it. It's on there. It's tight. Tight on the wire. This wire. This one already has a pre-cut. Pull that off, twist the end so it doesn't fray. This one does not. We cut this to basically the length we need. So clip that, twist that. Then this kind of butt connector has a solder point in it. So if you ever need these, which these things are amazing, you need to get them on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below for them. Twist these together really tight. Pull them back through. If I can get it to go back through. Wind it through. All right. It has solder right here. And it has two pieces of rubber right here. So this becomes a water seal or a watertight connection on top of it. It solders all that together. So, let's watch this happen. All right, now that that's completely sealed up and it's soldered together, normally the solder melts a little bit more, but that's okay. It's together. So now we have a full connection between one side and the other. This is a heat shrink butt connector. These work amazing too. You just crimp them and then you heat shrink them and they seal up to the wire and keep an extra bond on them. So you're not just holding on to up here. So let's go hook this up and then we're going to uh, hook this entire thing up and see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna come out this side with these wires. This side already has a nut on it. So this side was the one that we cranked down with that.
All right, so I've got this thing wired up temporarily to see what it does. So, all right, we got it off. This is red power wire. So, power. This is black to black. This is, this goes to the box and this goes to the battery. So here it is. All right, it's off, on. All right, you see a red light here. You see a red light over here. I don't know if you see that red light. You see a red light over here on the box. That means this battery goes to that battery, that battery over there. So then once we switch this switch back off, switch, it clicks off. No lights. On, lights. Off, no lights. So it's pretty cool. It works. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is i got to pop this box back off because I'm going to rewire this into the back here with this other power wire. And so it constantly has power. So when it's on, it shows us on. When it's off, it shows us off. So I'm going to do that real quick and we'll look at how this thing hooks up. All right, so you want to see how this works. Well, we're going to go one way and then i got to go get the keys because here's the one way. All right, that's the starting battery. It's a 1209. This one's not on yet. We're going to flip this switch on. Lights on. That's on. Come over here. It's at 11.73. So, if it's at 11.73, right there, switch this switch back off. Boop. Now, we're back up to 12. Why is that? Because that battery's dead. It needs to be charged up. So, but it's still a good battery. So what we'll do is, I'll go get the keys, we'll start this puppy up, see how it charges, and if it charges, we got it good. All right, so we're running. We got it working. Look at that. We got a leisure battery. Now, all I have to do is take the ground and the power, and I got distribution blocks, and it's coming all the way up behind here. And then I'm going to put a relay from here, like I said, over to stereo. So when it clicks on, the stereo wire turns all the components that's going to be behind here on. I'm going to have a faceplate right here with a CD player and or well, a Bluetooth radio, whatever you want to call it. Some 12 volt outlets. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do that that way. So it stays covered up and put away where you can put your phone in there if you want to. This is gonna put a new knob up here, but it's all gonna work off of that switch so that battery doesn't die whenever it comes down to it. On top of that, I showed y'all I have a solar panel too. Solar panel is going to go right here, well, right behind this glass so that it keeps a charge on that battery. And then I'm going to get another solar panel after a little while, put it on this side for that battery. So, let's get back in the shop. All right, so you see the mess I have here wires, Bluetooth, radio, speakers. Uh, the solar panel, some other junk, some struts. You see all that because that's coming up in the next few episodes. So if you want to know anything about them, watch me fail on putting them in and have to redeem myself by fixing it because I will. So we got that all done. Now we have a leisure battery or slash backup battery just in case we need anything else done. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, likes, dislikes, Hit me up in the comments. If you like anything in this video, want to look at it, want to take a gander at it, and possibly purchase it for yourself, it's in the link in the description below. If you want to follow me on social media, it's uh, the shop worldwide on Instagram and Facebook. Get you some merch. I want to thank y'all for joining in again. Next time, you'll see me put in uh, 
possibly the distribution block, the relay, the radio, and the 12 volt system because I'm going to have to wire it up all pre going in so I can make sure it's all good and where I want it. So, till next time.